All around the Arctic, polar bears depend on the sea ice. Now, they don't eat ice, but they catch their prey from the surface of the sea ice. The sea ice isn't the same everywhere. And in 2007, I realized that it's really important for us to figure out how and why the ice is different and why bears might respond differently to it. And I came up with the concept of four major ice ecoregions defined by how the ice forms, how it melts, how it moves according to ocean currents, and then how the polar bears respond. The first of these is what I call the seasonal ice ecoregion. This is the part of the world that includes Hudson Bay and much of eastern Canada. The ice there is composed only of annual ice, and when it melts in the summer, the polar bears are forced ashore. Historically, polar bears were able to do just fine with this environment because most of this region is shallow continental shelf water and very productive. So even if bears were forced ashore for an extended period, they could gain enough weight before that happened that they could survive. They could live off, literally live off the fat of their bodies while they were waiting for the ice to come back. The seasonal ice ecoregion is one we know a great deal about because when polar bears are on land, they're a little bit easier to study than when they're out on the sea ice. We've gained opportunity to learn how important the sea ice is. But the ice there is very different than in most of the rest of the polar bear range. Rather than seasonal ice, the ice in the other three regions is multi-year or perennial ice. And that means that a big component of it remained through the summer and historically bears could stay on that ice, continuing to feed, reaching their peak weights in the fall instead of in the spring as they do in the seasonal ice ecoregion. From Alaska all the way around the Russian Arctic to the Svalbard Archipelago north of Norway is the divergent ice ecoregion. Ice tends to form along the shoreline and then it drifts away from the shoreline out into the center of the polar basin. Some of it actually is ejected from the polar basin. But the important point is that during the summer, this concept of the ice moving with the currents away from the shore means that the ice is always trying to open up and create a gap between the shoreline and the sea ice. Now, this didn't used to be a problem because when the world was cooler, the ice never retreated very far. Now, the ice from the divergent ice ecoregion is moving from shore out into the polar basin, but a lot of it piles up against the shoreline in northern Canada and also in northern Greenland. I call that area the convergent ice. The divergent ice ecoregion is kind of supplying ice to the convergent ice ecoregion. In the convergent ice ecoregion, polar bears historically didn't come ashore either. The fourth ecoregion is the archipelago ecoregion, composed of the narrow channels of water between the high Canadian Arctic islands. They're very far north, very cold, and even with global warming, ice has persisted through this area for most of the summer and polar bears don't have to come ashore.